Okay, I want to get moving into oxidative phosphorylation, and to start, I want to talk about the mitochondria. Okay, and the mitochondria are present in nearly all eukaryotic cells, okay? And it is these organelles that produce the majority of the ATP in the cells, okay? Um, basically, we talked about glyco glycolysis, and we learned in glycolysis that you could form like two ATPs, okay? A net of two ATPs, two NADH molecules, but nothing significant, not a significant amount of energy, okay? But in aerobic respiration, you can actually produce between 30 and 32 ATPs, okay? So that is quite a significant difference and quite a lot of energy that's going to be generated. And um, this process, called oxidative phosphorylation, occurs, you know, in the mitochondria, all right? And it plays an extremely important role. That's why some people call it the powerhouse of cells or something along those lines. Um, and the mitochondria contains an outer membrane and an inner membrane, okay? And by having the outer and inner membrane, they actually can they actually contain then two internal compartments, okay? So each mitochondria also contains its own DNA, RNA, and transcription and translation machinery. All right? It has its own DNA, RNA, transcriptional and translation, uh, transcription and translation machinery. And um, it has a, it's a double membrane structure, okay? And each mitochondrion is bound by two highly specialized membranes, okay? The outer and the inner mitochondrial membranes create two separate compartments. A large internal space, which is known as the mitochondrial matrix, and the much narrower internal, or intermembrane space, rather. So there's a much narrower intermembrane space, which is where the protons are going to be pumped during the process of electron transport. And the outer membrane contains many molecules of a transport protein called porin. Um, and these porins are large water-filled pores, okay? And they allow for the passage of small molecules, generally molecules 5,000 Daltons or less, okay? and also nutrients, of course, so small molecules and nutrients, while preventing the passage of much larger molecules. So an example of maybe a large molecule for a bacteria or something that you wouldn't want to pass through these um, proteins, because these proteins, these porins, are also found in bacteria, um, would be like an antibiotic, okay? So it prevents the passage of large molecules while allowing small molecules and nutrients to pass through. Now that's the outer membrane. In the inner membrane, okay, it's impermeable to the passage of ions and most small molecules. So it doesn't even allow the passage of ions or small molecules. And that's important because this inner membrane space is going to be where the protons are going to be pumped. So we don't want protons to be pumped into the inner membrane space and to be simply moved right back in because right back into the inner mitochondrial matrix because that will create a futile cycle. So we don't want that, obviously. And that's why it's important that the inner membrane is not permeable to ions and small molecules. Um, except where there's, of course, highly specialized cells, okay? So there's uh, cells, highly specialized proteins called transport proteins. And these transport proteins can, um, can allow for the passage. And they do allow for the passage, especially of protons. So the inner membrane contains many folds or crista. And they and what they do is they increase the surface area. The crystal increase the surface area, and by increasing the surface area, it allows more space for the creation or synthesis of ATP. Okay, so it allows more space for the synthesis of ATP. So the more surface area you have, the more um, ATP you can create, and th and that's true for things like if you look at mitochondria from say heart muscle and you also look at mitochondria from, say, the skin, what you would first notice is that the heart muscle, the mitochondria and the heart muscle have a lot more crista. And why? Well, because the heart is constantly beating. It requires, the heart muscle is constantly working. It's constantly contracting. And it requires a lot more ATP. Okay? So if you don't have a larger surface area, you're going to be short on the ATP, and that's not going to be good for your heart. So that's one of the reasons why an increase in surface area is extremely important. Now I got just a little diagram of what one of these looks like, the typical cartoon drawing you'll see in any textbook or any uh, website. And, you know, it just shows that there's an outer membrane, and that creates the first space, which is known as the inner membrane space. And then you have an inner membrane, which basically creates the second space, which is the mitochondrial matrix. 
Okay, and it also shows these folding, this folding or crista that I talked about in the um, previous uh, a couple of seconds ago. So that's basically what a mitochondria looks like, and that's basically where they, they function. So they are extremely important in um, oxidative phosphorylation, and we'll see exactly why in short, you know, in a couple more videos.